the airport, you know that though, I think. Excuse me, you need you know that we need to go to the airport, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> airport international or domestic? No, we have to go to Tasmania, Chetstar. Oh domestic, yeah? yeah domestic, yes. So sorry because I'm very much You're on here time. Now. You're here now, don't worry. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> sorry, I just say this all. No, because it happened that we would we wanted just you know there are so few people working with colostrum in the world and uh, um, I myself started with my little small company. Yeah, yeah. Now twelve years ago and we try very hard to Somehow implemented it started and switched now to to, the, to endurance sport, mm. and uh, so of course I I read your paper on the leaky gut and uh, so my gosh and, you know I have been as a physician working as an intensive care unit and I was a lot confronted with the problem of leaky gut and yeah. translocation yeah. issues and I thought it and we had I mean we only have um, of course experience now with patients but or any athletes but no scientific yeah well because i'm a gastroenterologist of course it yeah. was the it was around the nutrition side and then i moved into the looking at the bioactives and one of the uh, companies that i was working with they had some colostrum mm -hmm. and so i suggested that i did some research clinical research with them and so that's what started off around that yeah. area. So starting off with the cells and then moving up to the other models and then into okay. the full clinical trials. And this was also the study with the anti-inflammatory... Yes. This was the first one I... The first I one from my into, gastroenterology yeah, background yeah. As, a, as a way of um, dealing with small intestinal injury. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of course, the acid suppressants are good for the stomach but not so good for the small intestines. So. And this was... One of the few studies, because there are so many studies that are not good, mm. and I'm always happy <laughs> if you find somebody like you. And uh, is it like, uh, are you continuing on this path? Yes, yes. I'm working with uh, some other colleagues uh, to look at colostrum in other in other contexts. Yeah, and I mean, sort of an ITU context would be interesting, yeah. um, but also looking at the uh, athletic performance mm -hmm. with with colleagues in Aberystwyth and some other places. So is this already ongoing? Or yes, we've got some things happening already Yeah. and we're applying for some grants uh, also to continue because the cost of the permeability studies is quite high. Quite high, yeah. yeah. Because of the, I yeah. mean the sugars are expensive as well as the, yeah. as the machines. And uh, I mean the, I think especially the gut is a very isn't it a very tricky organ to, to investigate? Mm. Although at least we can see it, of course. We've got the advantage of being able to look inside and see it. <laughs> and what do you, how is the model you're using? Can you explain? Uh, the the ones that we are using for the clinical trials is uh, sugar permeability, comparing two, mm -hmm. one sugar that sort of goes in the gaps between the cells and the other one that sort of goes through the cells and you can look at the ratios of the two and how, okay. they, how they vary and they vary. With, uh, if somebody has a high temperature or has a damaged gut. Yeah. And the good thing is it, it's reverse if things get better. Because as I, I, we have a gastroenterologist in Berlin, Professor Loch, so I don't know whether you know him, so I was with him, it's many years ago, and he, there I learned a lot about uh, how volatile permeability yes, is. Yes, yes, and it's got to be done accurately and reproducibly yeah, so yeah. you'll have seen from the papers I spent a lot of time yeah. showing that our results were reproducible yeah uh, multiple analyses on one individual and checking that you know and what was your rationale saying a colostrum should be a substance that makes sense in these kind of uh, indications 
well, probably the same lines as, as you're thinking about the natural product and what it what is it there for? It's there for the newborn baby or the newborn calf to help it grow yeah. the intestine as well as give immune support. Do you, do you meet a lot of obstacles in the, in the scientific community? Nutraceuticals is not yeah. a, an area that a lot of scientists are interested in, mm -hmm. um, so that's one obstacle. Um, when you're looking at patients, they automatically assume it's from humans, the colostrum, so you have to reassure them, no, it's not from humans, it's from, from cows. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think once you persuade people uh, that it is a natural product and it's been used for a long time by people, uh, I think they're much more comfortable much more comfortable with it and yeah. think, you know, it is a pretty basic natural natural yeah. product isn't it but I, I was astonished when I started out because I was so enthusiastic mm. you know, so my god it is I, I mean I, I'm like I, I did a lot of I'm very interested in the immunology and the mm. complex systems and this kind of thing but it's a I'm an autodidact I came from somewhere outside, but I did a lot of reading, of course, yeah. as, as I said, a lot of speculations. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, I also had this illusion, let's say, this is easy. You have to tell people it's all natural, it's all good for the babies, it's this, and, that. and now I meet. It's so difficult to convince and it's almost a taboo, mm. uh, this colostrum, I don't know, because it's depressed or mm. something like this. Mm. Yeah. It is, well, and also, of course, it, it needs to be processed to be in a, a form that's palatable, because your basic powdered colostrum is not particularly no, pleasant not. to take. So yes, is it, is it, uh, how do you do the dosaging? How do you decide? Did you do dosage finding? Uh, I did. I have done some of those, but I mean, I started off with the um, what the recommended ones for the people that were selling it mm -hmm. um, to see whether that was a mm -hmm. beneficial one. And now we're looking mm -hmm. at the timing, how long does it take to influence mm -hmm. its effect? Because we tend to give it for a couple of weeks before we do yeah. the assessment. And we're doing some more research onto you know, just how long do you have to take it for? So this is what our next set of studies. And do you also have a recommendation already concerning dosages? Um, well, only off what it says on the papers. I can't remember yeah, what the dose is, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I would just because yeah. those, those are the the doses we've tried are the ones that are published. Yeah. Okay. Um, but our next set will be are looking at different doses, different timings. Because those yeah, the timing is also something. Mm. We, I mean, I can only say what we experience from patients. Then we mm. have a. I mean, it's twelve years now. It's a long time. I try to record it as good as possible. I mean, it's, but it's just evidence, if I feel. Huh? Yes. And, and so what, what's happening with your uh, company? You were talking about doing your... You know, you're going to have a group working Yeah, we are, we, we are a group that... Uh, I, you know, I love to look at things differently. I have this company called Bitly. I have to see afterwards where my cards, but it, I'm in a mess, you know, in this dress here. <laughs> really? And I was so, I feel so sorry for all this. So, um, now I lost track, you see. What, 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 what? We're talking about your company. Yeah, I mean the company, and then, of course, I said, I have to break off the, the barriers and limits. I'm, I'm getting all over colostrum, and I don't see, you know, get so not pos positively focused anymore. I said, I would like to have an independent group to look at scientific questions mm. and give it to, I mean, we are now in endurance sports, so for athletes, because I see there with a lot of narrow-minded views on the training and all the troubles. I mean, I have quite some athletes very close that complain about the issues they have all the time. Mm. So I thought I would like to have an independent platform, not commercial, find people who think differently and who take steps forward and do not the mainstream, the easy way out, only looking for the quick publishing mm. process. <laughs> it's a hard work. I mean, it's hard in science. Like, mm. And um, I had this in I mean, I, I, I had this in mind already for a long time, but you don't, you know, you cannot do every, everything at the time. So this year I said, so I have to do it because I get so one-sided, mm. blind. And uh, this is how it, and then I, of course, of course, I started to contact you. 
Then I contact, I have been in Geneva and we met Ben Kaiser. And um, I would love to see Tim Noakes. <coughs> and the Copenhagen group mm -hmm. was uh, Clarence Peterson. And this is step by step because still I have to try to do the, <laughs> the business. So, and I hope we succeed and we would try to implement a platform that we have on a regular basis, a gathering, mm -hmm. ex uh, idea exchange, I mean, a little bit like the TED format, ideas worth spreading. Mm -hmm. I mean, this takes time, I know, I have to go step by step, but when I came, I was so happy that you were ready to receive us, and therefore I was so sorry that all this may happen. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, because, of course, I come from, from nowhere, and uh, why should people say, okay, pass by? So I try to do this, and I'm happy about every appointment. I do whatever I can to make it happen. Sure. Yeah, because sure. it's, a, and I would like to get the message across <coughs> for those people who do the, do the, the sport, because um, I see they could perform and could be a lot better if they had different views on and try to have a 360, I mean, it's a little exaggerated, but at least try. Yeah. 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 And I'm not, I'm, I'm a person who is, I'm not this, you know, I have this company, but I'm more motivated by the ideas, and I hope that... I can know. see your enthusiasm, I can see it, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but this is, no, it's not enough. No, no, it's not enough, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I also... So therefore, I also try to get. I have to finance it, and you you, you are walking like you know to proceed like this. Uh, this uh. is what uh, what it is about, and um, I'm I'm very interested in these questions also about the brain, how it influences, and the gut brain access yeah. and these yeah. things. And we made these experiences with colostrum because having a a huge variety of patients, and perhaps this is what we do with dosaging. I start with a uh, between one gram and four grams mm. average and I, we did a very big, I mean it was in the beginning uh, the, uh, placebo controlled with whey and um, because I said if it's not working with one gram or, or four gram this was a I will not be able to market it sure. it doesn't make sense sure. and now the experience is that we have a, a wide range where I try to talk with patients how I mean also with athletes because they have a lot of health issues anywhere too allergies and gut issues, yes. chronic inflammatory bowel syndrome, or things like this. To see, I try to talk about the activity state they are in and how they respond to external and internal stimuli and like this I try to find a dosage. But this is of course, you know, it's all feet by feel. Yes. But um, it, it, it is amazingly how, amazing how it how it worked in I mean, a lot of multiple sclerosis patients, mm. chronic pain syndrome. We have the only person who always motivated me to is University of Würzburg. I don't know whether you know he's working in chronic um, pain syndrome. Of course, very very difficult patients mm. and um, with high dosage. And we were discussing a lot this problem because we have experience with a low dose, even half. I mean, 150 milligram very sensitive patients are helping in gut issues. And then you have the chronic mm. patients where you have to give 10 to 20 gram. Mm. But they respond this to neuralgia and mucofascial uh, pain. Mm. I mean, because of this interaction between the immune system and the nervous system. So these are interesting things. Um, yeah, this is why. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs>